a lot of you have been asking if I could make a video about the Fluent Materializer with nodes. There are a lot of nodes and it's not uh, totally clear how to use them at first sight. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you all you need to know about those nodes. Whenever you want to make a model that is wood, so you would make some planks like this. And in Materializer, if I just go into my texturing studio, uh, up here, once you added a new material to your object, go to the Fluent tab and Wood section over there. In this wood section, you have a lot of nodes. And if you see in the corner, you have a UV in orange. And this means that your object needs to be UV unwrapped if you want to use those nodes with the UV in a corner. So that's very important. Um, uh, this object right here is UV unwrapped, so I could use any of those nodes. And if you see the wood number two, is not a UV based material. So it means that you can use it in any object. It will be oriented based on uh, your uh, scene. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty handy uh, if you want. So um, any wood uh, material will come with the color and uh, also a normal. So that's something you can go with like that. And with the wood number two, because this is not uh, UV, you can actually change the rotation and say based on which axis it has to be oriented. So along X or Y or Z axis. Right now it's X because this is zero. If we put it to Y, uh, it will be one. And uh, right now the scale is a little bit too small. so. Uh, so you can decrease the scale and this will increase your uh, your texture per se. So this is how it works uh, for one that is completely not using UVs. Now, if you have one that is using UV, for example, uh, the wood number three, This means this would require you to have the UVs in the right direction. So right now the uh, planks are along this and the wood is perfectly aligned because I already UV unwrapped in the right direction. But if you have a model, uh, some faces might be uh, not along all those faces. So if we select all those faces, you see that they are aligned in the same axis. But if you are using a UV-based node wood, uh, you could have, for example, one of the planks that is in this direction. And as you can see, now the wood is not pointing in the right uh, axis. So that's something to keep in mind when you are using those UV here um, object. So the second step that is pretty cool because right now we are using, of course, um, a mesh that is plank. So those are real planks. This is a geometry planks. Yeah, if we go back to the main scene uh, here, you can see that this model itself is 1,210 triangle. Okay, so uh, this is not really efficient if you want just to make a wall in the background or just a ground on your scene. Uh, it might increase the triangle uh, quite a bit. So um, the one cool thing in Fluent Materializer is that you can basically take a plane and use a material on it and with a pattern because a plane is by default UV unwrapped make sure this is scale of course uh, so you can um, control A and apply the scale of your floor or your wall whatever um, now if you use a 
material. So let me close this. This will become interesting because you can use uh, the wood number three. And uh, for this, we're going to use the become pattern. So this node over there is basically taking a texture. It could be an image texture from uh, assets website, or it could be a procedural texture like this wood number three. Now, uh, we need to mix this with a pattern because this is transforming a texture into a pattern texture. So you have a lot of pattern that is existing. And if we take the planks to uh, actually match the example we had before with the model, um, you can mix those three together. So we're going to plug the texture of course, with the color and the normal of the texture here for the wood. Now, the generated UV, it means that this node, the pattern node, will generate UV to uh, dynamically change the, um, the orientation of the planks. So uh, you have to plug the generated UV into the custom UV. And one important thing is that if you want to use a become pattern with a pattern, you need to have a wood that, is, that has custom UVs here. That's uh, important uh, because some of them don't have uh, those. Okay, so we plug the e AO into the AO and the randomization into the random factor. Uh, the normal of the planks into the pattern normal. And we can just plug those here. So um, you see we have some planks and also those are different colors. And this is because of the randomization. If I unplug this, this will be uh, just one color, right? So uh, the randomization is nice to add a little bit of uh, realism to the scene. So to change the, how the randomization is placed, you need to change the seed in your pattern node. So either it's plank or uh, any of those pattern over there, they will have a seed. So that that's cool. And also you can change here the U saturation value so this is how it affects uh, the material if you want uh, no alteration for your uh, colors and uh, saturation you put 0 0.5 here one here and one here uh, let's say you want to put some of them a little bit darker then you can decrease this and uh, just have a slight uh, variation into the color if you want to change to have uh, less or more planks into your floor, uh, you go here to the pattern scale and you can increase it and decrease it to have uh, bigger planks or, uh, or smaller planks. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. So I'm going to take a little bit more interesting pattern here. And the good thing is you can pretty much change the pattern uh, in a few clicks. So you change the pattern, you plug the AO, you plug the random here, you plug the normal of the pattern in the pattern normal node, and of course the generated UV into the custom UV. Uh, this is important. You have to plug this to be aligned with uh, those. So um, you might need to uh, check here, you may need to put it to one to actually align. If it's not already uh, aligned, you have to uh, put these use custom UVs at one. So it aligns the planks with the pattern automatically and uh, it's uh, pretty handy. So that's a nice floor. And let's say you want to add a little bit more realism into uh, where it comes together, like with the different planks here. Uh, this will be actually affected with the AO factor here. So I'm going to actually make some space. We can remove this one. 
And I'm going to affect the AO factor with a grunge. And this is where it comes interesting because you can change, plug the result into the AO factor and boom, directly uh, this is not uh, really uh, realistic because we need to change, of course, uh, the scale of it. And we can also play with the cover. This still a little bit weird. So I also advise you to uh, add a math node here and add in the add uh, thing here, you can affect the entire mask. So that's pretty cool. If it's too uh, detailed here, just uh, decrease a little bit the details. Um, you can add a little bit of blur uh, to make it a little bit softer. And already it becomes a little bit more realistic. So that's cool. Um, you can also add impacts and uh, scratch on the floor. Uh, this is when you are basically using Fluent Materializer layers. So let's say I'm selecting the principal PSDF, press F and here two layers. So the first layer will be uh, the wood. And on top of that, you can add imperfections like dents or scratches, for example. Um, I'm gonna go check the mask of this, so decrease the scale. You see to add a little bit impact on the floor uh, because it could be an old floor uh, in a castle or somewhere. Uh, it changed the probability. And if we check this, we have some white imperfections because of course we didn't change the color so we could go with something dark and something brownish would say and of course plug the normal here and the roughness 0.8 so you could you could add a little bit of details like this on top of that uh, wood pattern. So another really cool node is this one over there, the wood cracked paint. The wood cracked paint, it has a lot of settings. Uh, don't be afraid. And it's basically a mask that will mix this with this one. So we plug the mask and it creates this kind of uh, pattern here. And of course, uh, right now you can use the object or the UVs. Um, if you are using the UVs, so by default it's zero, it means it's using the UVs. Your model has to be UV unwrapped. This is very important. Uh, otherwise you can use the object uh, mode. Uh, right now I'm gonna keep it like this. To change the scale of those cracks you have the large cracks those are here and you have the thin cracks those are the very small one i hope you can see them in the video and uh so yeah so a cool thing is to actually plug a wood material into uh the first layer so the first layer is what is behind it. So this layer at the bottom will be the paint. So let's say we go with a paint like say this. So a green paint. Uh, don't forget to plug the normal here. And we can actually increase it to make it a little bit more interesting. And this is the wood behind the paint because the paint is scratched. So you can use basically a uh, wood node, plug the color, plug the normal here. And uh, one thing to be aware of is the orientation of the wood. We see that the cracks are actually in this direction. So we might need to actually change uh, the rotation so it matches here. 
So that's uh, something to to keep in mind, and you can change a little bit the strength of the wood behind the paint, and we start having some really interesting wood material here. Um, let me just change the um, the lighting. Great. Perfect. And here. Um, just to see how the material is reacting to the light. So that's very important when you're making a material to have your lights rotating around your object or yourself like the, the camera in the viewport rotating to see how it reacts and uh, we see right now that the wood for example here is a little bit too uh, shiny for example so uh, the wood is the first layer i'm gonna make it a little bit rough great so that's pretty cool and uh, you can change either the large cracks or the thin crack. Like I said, uh, the whole probability is uh, the number of uh, destruction you have here. And this one is for the big one, the big cracks. So that's it for the wood nodes in Fluent Materializer. If you haven't seen it, you can check this video.